Polyglot Persistence is a universe where you can take advantage of several database than relational database. In this video, I will explore more about NoSQL database, the type, the structure, and use case. Hello you, my name is Otavio Santana and welcome to my YouTube channel, the channel for who wants to become a better software engineer and software architect. So if you want to learn more around software architecture, soft design, Java, persistence layer, NoSQL database, subscribe in my channel and participate to become an ultimate software engineer. Okay, let's talk about NoSQL database here. Before start, it is, is important to highlight that I will cover only the four more mature ones. What does that mean? Yes, there is more NoSQL types that I won't cover here. For example, the time series one. It's starting to the most simplest one, the key value. It has a key as unique way to find the information and then the value as a blob. We can compare that with the Java map. I only have the key to return my information. Okay, key and then the value. Comparing with relational database, where we basically do have the key value pairs, my query flexibility is super limited. As I said, you are able to do only by the key. Because this, this simplicity, the scalability might be much higher in key value database than in relational database. The flexibility is huge, right? I mean, it has a limitation because I only have the key and the value and I can put whatever I want in the value. That's why I put limited here. If you compare with, for example, relational database, I can return a small piece of my room, for example. I can do a select name, email from person. And on the hand, in the key value, I re will return our the value. There is no relationship, so minimal. And assets may vary. As I said, there are huge amount of NoSQL implementations. It includes several implementations of the key value but usually not. They won't be compliant with uh, asset and when it does, with several limitations. So it's not strong like a relational database. Here, I listed several use case like caching, session management, pub sub messaging, a leadership board, so we can define a score to put in a ranking. Thus, for example, you can link with Redis, for example. It's a good product where you can use key value with Java, for example. There are su support to several Java frameworks as well. Move on to the next one that we cover here, wide column or column family. It is pretty similar to key value. However, because you return information by the key, however, you can split the information in small pieces like columns. So, I, as you can see here, just Aphrodite has color. Um, and just Kratos has dead gods. Okay? The main point here is I able to create columns just in time when I, I need. The query, a majority going through the key. However, there is several ways to skip that way with a huge impact in performance. For example, enable secondary index. But I recommend you to avoid that as possible and explore more the key. The relationship with relational database, we do have columns in rules. Relational database provides tables. The query is more flexible if you, we compare with key value. 
but no reach like a complex one. The scalability, if you follow the flow of exploring the key or the ID, might be excellent. A relational database is good. Remember, the idea is to not say that relational database is deprecated. There's no true. You can do several huge applications with relational database. Relational database is high scalable. They are more mature tools and so on. So I'm trying to compare here, uh, for example, Cassandra with another solution. And as it's important to say, everything has a trade-off. It is just a brief video explaining the difference between relational database, no relational database, no SQL, and some use cases. The flexibility is higher than key value, but it's not super flexible like a database. And I don't have a relationship here. What I can do, for example, with Cassandra, I can explore UDT. It's not, I'm not, I don't have the huge flexibility in the model relationships like I do with MySQL, Postgres, and so on. My assets may vary, but usually not. When it does, there is a huge recommendation like don't do it the whole time. And with relational database, you can do as much as possible. It's, it's free to go. Here, some use case with one column, so real-time analytics, logging, monitoring, events, IoT data management, and so on. For example, I can list, for example, Netflix. That's a good one. Move on to the next one that we cover today. Document structure looks like an XML or JSON file where I have more flexibility than key value and column, white column. My data structure is based in documents. My flexibility is high at documental level, so I can do more queries than by key. If without any huge impact that I did with key value and white column. The scalability here is excellent, like relational database. The flexibility is high. However, it's not recommended that you do relationship between documents, like relationship. You can do some relationship based on embedded, so you can create some documents. And the asset it is strong, however, with a huge limitations. So if you want to have a database with a strong uh, asset, relational, da relational database is your bank, okay? Is what you're looking for. So you can use, you can apply the asset with, for example, MongoDB. However, there are a couple of restrictions doing that. Some user case, so mobile application where you can provide some schemaless information. So you can insert some JSON directly in the file if, if without impact. Social media platforms, e-commerce, and so on. The last one that we cover today is graph, where as you can see, I able to do relationship between edge vertex, and I have one object that holds my relationship, that is edge. So I have directions, I have properties, and I have label of these relationships and so on. So I have Apollo, Aries, and Kratos. And as you can see, I have Kratos killed Apollo. One direction and Apollo was killed by Kratos. So I have directions of my relationships. And this enable, enables me a huge and powerful uh, query support, especially if you do relationships. Uh, my data structure here is basically a node in vertex in relationships tables. My query flexibility here is excellent. Yes, you can do a huge of queries, even, even directions, properties, and so on. My scalability is good. Uh, my flexibility it is okay, it provides several limitations, okay? And the relationship 
I can say it sometimes can go deeper than relation database because I said I can put properties inside my relationships. I can put direction inside my relationships and my asset compliance, it gets closer to relation database. However, it's not that mature than a relation database. Okay. It's closer, but not sophisticated enough like relation database. Here, I can provide to you some user case, social networks to do the interactions. For example, the reason that I know Cristiano Ronaldo, it does not mean that Cristiano Ronaldo knows me. So I can put direction that recommendation engine, fraud detections, and so on. The main goal of the video today is to explain quickly around NoSQL database, the structure and user case. Remember, the goal here is not to complain about relational database. It's a short video. And if you want to know more details, Karina Varela and I published the book. The link is below if you want to know more, especially around the persistence layer. That's all for today, please. Put your thoughts, put your comments. And finally, if you want to know more, keeping move your career forward as an ultimate engineer, subscribe in my channel.